That's probably the main motivation not to lose this game for them. What do you think of the lineups? Yeah, I think what the panel touched upon is basically my read on the situation too. I think G2 IG's lineup has probably, they have, I guess they have better lanes than they did in the last game, but I think they're very dependent on them going well. Whereas last time around when OG had the better lanes, it felt like they were also transitioning it very well into the mid game here. It almost feels like a necessity for the IG lineup to get ahead so they can compensate for lack of team fight and lack of uh, ability to defend towers reliably. So definitely looking to Seb in this game as the X factor, the nature's prophet. This is the third game we see it. He's one and one, the hero is. I don't think Seb has played at this tournament. Um, but it is one of his absolute best, so I'm not too surprised to see this team in particular bring it out. And I think the mindset they have around it is exactly that. All right, IG are very lane heavy. Let's break it up. The battle begins. Yeah, we were casting one yesterday where the Nature's Prophet was picked, and it really didn't work out. It's all about that early game. Uh, make sure you get the Wisdom Runes is, I think, something that we <laughs> learned, or at least reaffirmed yeah. in that best of three. But yeah, I think the first five minutes, maybe 10 minutes, will really dictate how this game is going to flow uh, to the late game, potentially, for the Nature's Profit. So BZM on the Pangolier in the mid lane versus nothing to say TA. A little bit of swap here. Uh, it was the off lane Pango for IG last time, and of course, the TA for OG. Yeah, nothing to say has had. I want to say one or two really good TA performances this tournament, so should be warmed up on the hero. Uh, and let's see if he can do similarly to what BZM managed to do last game. BZM was winning the lane handily and also got some help. This time around, you know the Pango against TA matchup should be very good for the TA, but Nature's Prophet comes in at the right time, perhaps can swing the matchup in the favor of the Pango. With one good move somewhere down the line before TA gets too strong, and if nothing else, maybe at least Contest some of the water runes is a possibility. Mm -hmm. So, so far so good for BZM in that mid lane. Looks very even. Yeah, Ari pulling the lane. This is going to be the next patch where these uh, creeps actually meet. It's going to be really messy. Ari playing the Marcy this time. Uh, haven't seen the Hoodwink today, Cinder, which is probably yep. his uh, most well known hero. He's been playing that a lot as of this last couple of years. But how does the Marcy fit into this to this game? I think, I think Marcy doesn't have the best matchups as even as a support. I, I think I would be more concerned if they were playing it as a carry on Tomato as they have done in the past sometimes, because the Bane is a pretty rough matchup. It, both in Feeble as well as Fiend Script are really good against you. And the enemy cores, all three of them are relatively tanky, so you're, you're unlikely to just kill them in an Unleashed Burst. The TA has Refraction that you need to cut through, the Dragonite has a lot of armor, and Morphling, you know, needs no introduction, right? So. I think for Ari, this is uh, going to be really interesting to see how he itemizes. That early rotation. Oh. Nice blood grenade with the sprout coming in, but Baboka TPs. And now the blood grenade being turned against Seb instead. He eats the tree. He says he might survive, but looks like Seb does get first blooded by Baboka before Whisper takes out X Nova on the other side. And BZM with a nice swashbuckle into the shield crash right click. So ends up getting a decent amount of XP in this mid lane, but Seb was the first to fall. Yeah, Boboka really wanted to deny that water rune, but it's going to cost him his life, so I don't think that was really worth it, necessarily. At the same time, if, when you have these low resources on a hero like Bane, it can be beneficial to die, so you can come back to lane and have impact. Either way, there will be a one-for-one -one trade, but nothing to say. should be quite happy with this exchange overall. He will get a little bit of an experience advantage, and of course, Avoiding disaster against the early Nature's Profit rotations is the name of the game here for G2IG. Still, OG's lanes are looking very healthy, in particular the Luna. Starting to build a bit of a gap toward JT. Safe lane. Yeah, and Whisper able to get that kill in this top lane as well, and we've seen how powerful the Brewmasters have been in this tournament. Very fitting with the, the theme in here in Birmingham, but. Able to get a relatively early Radiance has made a huge difference. Is this hero another one of those kind of snowball-y types? Yeah. Let's see how this fares for Whisper this time. It has definitely been a, a game changer for the, the brew that Radiance has got this much better. It feels like the hero doesn't have the same... It's not on a timer as much as it felt like it used to be. This item is just so strong for so long that... We used to have these games in the past where Brewmaster would feel relevant for 25 minutes and then all of a sudden just kind of falls off a cliff. 
even in the games where he's counterpicked by carries that can kill the split, the split's just so tanky when you're level 20, and you get there a lot faster because of how good Radiance is, so... Doesn't have the same shortcomings as did in the past. That's JT getting pressured. Yeah, and worst case scenario, it's always good for pushing, right? The Earth Panda is yeah. absurd with the siege damage. To the point where I'm surprised we don't see the Ags very often on the hero, but that has definitely fallen out of favor. As Whisper, looks like he is opting for the Spirit Vessel first, which we see at time against this uh, Morphling. We're going to see a TP coming in from Seb. We're going to focus on X Nova for now. He's just going to simply TP out, but Monet, he's now in a 3v1 situation inside the Sprout. He will follow suit with a TP as well. Yeah, opting to TP to the Tier 2 to have the shorter TP duration, since the Tier 1 TP was already hogged by the Inch. And yeah, this is, it's nice for them that they get out, but it's two TPs forced by just one spell cast effectively from the Nature's Prophet. So I think OG pretty happy with this. It's going to free up a lot of space for Whisper to safely get this full wave. And the Morphling is far behind. Borg was talking about this lane as supposedly being a good one for Morph, but it can be hard against Gru. And yeah, Ex Nova good. getting gone on. Ari will get the kill, and Monet being pressured away again. They don't have the damage to actually kill him, but. All the disruption that it can have is very, very valuable against this Morphling. And like we said, the Whisper Spirit Vessel eventually will be a very good pickup against this Morph. This guy's a 14 CS minute 5 against these two melee heroes together with Ench. Yeah, they're going to try for the rebound. Sprout again, but he's getting the attribute shift off. Has half mana capacity right now. It's Boboka making his way over. Basically a try lane for OG right now, it feels like. Radiant structure. As Whisper will continue on. Now they're going to try to focus on to Baboka. A lot easier kill, but the Sprout not able to connect. Monet is Monet not out of happy. Lane. Yeah, this absolutely. Is real bad. Keep in mind when this hero was picked, right? They had so much inform information available and still getting crushed. 29 and 14 on the Brew. He has as many denies as Morse has last hits right now. <laughs> yeah, that's a rough one. That's. Not the expected outcome. When you're playing basically any carry with Ench, you're expected to at least tie against these two melee heroes. But OG have just completely outplayed them and used the Nature's Prophet to great effect, really showing why they picked this hero in the game. Do we have a TP mid? Just maybe to refill the bottle here is Ari. Actually not coming from the fountain, looks like. Looking for a pickoff, but not to be this time. As Whisper left to his own devices, which means X Nova trying to advantage with that tomato creep. Already at half HP on Whisper. He does not have that primal split as of yet, but still the damage output is pitiful from IG. The Boca looking for the seven minute wisdom is spotted though. And this will likely turn into a kill. There's a nightmare comes out to make this a bit annoying, but the rebound stun. One more brain stab for the row, but Baboka brought back into the arms of Whisper and now Seth secures the wisdom room. At the very least, G2IG, they do get their own, but it's picked up by the Dragon Knight. So JT will have a fast level 6, but this is going to come at the expense of one of the supports now. Because they didn't get to share it among the two supports. Only one of them got the benefit, which I believe was Boboka. So now, this is a level 3.5 and, and a level almost 4 Bane, 7.30 into the game. For comparison, Ari's almost level 5, and Seb is 4.5. So more than a level advantage on the supports for the side of OG. Lane's looking... Very solid once more. And this was an IG lineup that needed to do well in lanes, right? Like, I'm really worried for them if they don't get off the ground here that they have no staying power when we get to minute 15 to 20 when OG start knocking down the tower. It's like, who's going to show up? Yeah, because we have another rebound attempt and the rolling thunder from BZM. Nothing to say gets caught off guard. Whisper even making a rotation along with Set. That's an easy pickoff for OG. Onto the mid laner of IG and now X Nova looks like He'll be able to tiptoe away. As Seth, he's going to potentially be the trade here as JT maneuvers over with that dragon form. Next Nova. Looks like he picked up that Invis rune earlier. Gets the Centaur creep off onto Ari. Disposed, but Dragon Tail is there. BZM with a nice shield crash onto three, but not going to be enough to save Ari. Whisper coming in with the Cinder Brew. The primal split to follow, but both is dead. Lifting up one more is nothing to say. Respawns and TPs, but now the surround tactics onto X Nova. He's basically a creep at this stage of the game. Lift up onto the TA, who's now left alone because the DK has TP'd out, and even Seth coming in with 
the TP. It's a four versus one inside the Sprout. Another blood grenade. Nothing to say dead. Tomato double kill and likely a tier one tower mid. They are playing so aggressive on yeah. OG. I mean, this, this is what it looks like when a Nature's Prophet is successful in the laning stage. Exactly, and this is what it feels like, where, or what it looks like when one side has a carry that can rotate and the other one doesn't, right? Like, Monet is never showing up to this. He can't help. So, Tomato coming in on the Luna for the big overwhelm. Also, at this nighttime with Lunar Blessing, just really ramping up the pace here, OG. OG will get a little bit of time to breathe now, but already so far behind. Losing mid tower at 9.30 as TA feels really bad. And Dragon Knight has actually done less damage to OG's bottom tower than the Luna has to his, so... Tim Otto has almost managed to take the bot tier 1 while also being mid. Yeah, it feels like he's just had a completely free game, and now that Spirit Vessel online for Whisper, so... The Morphling... I mean, even the DK... We'll suffer the consequences in all likelihood if OG can Tower continue damage. this pressure. Damage rune taken by Boboka, so kind of denied from OG. They have a decent amount of early map control. And we'll see what kind of lead they can mount here. Or if IG can try to counteract this in some fashion. I mean, what, what's the go time for them? Like <laughs> some sort of blink dagger for DK? <laughs> try to set something up? He's about a thousand away. Yeah, I, I don't really have a good answer to that question, which is what worries me, is that I, I don't see the obvious timing here. Um, I think you need levels on supports. I, I think Bane has to get six. Uh, Dragon Knight, as you say, gets the bling. And then the Dragonlance TA, like maybe you can start stringing something together, but the problem is you can't take five on fives, right? You have to somehow split push the map, try to force skirmishes so that you can either outnumber with your Radiant's Bane catching in the side lane or maybe getting some sort of TA trap play with Dragon Knight, like whatever it is. If you want to avoid the full-on engagements because you have no tools to deal with a Bruce split and a Pango roll. Until Bane gets six. When Bane has six, you can grip the roll, but are you even going to kill him during his yeah, question? Yeah, Sad and company, they want to defend this tier one tower. JT looks like the TP will be successful, but Baboka, not so lucky. It's OG that they are not going to be giving up this tier 1 tower without a fight. Of course, with this lead, they have the option to do so, and now will likely try to pressure this tier 1. In fact, should be able to kill it with that Siege Wagon in tow. Now you can see from Sep's item build what the plan is here. OG really looking to group up. He will complete it now, so that will be a very early Vlads for a full-on five-man strategy that OG have been tailored, uh, have been building for in this game with the strategy. It's just, I think the, the lanes actually went better than you almost could have hoped. Oh, everything just coming up OG. Expecting them to not wait long before they start thinking about something like either a Roshan or a tier two tower. Yeah, I think we saw, what, a 13 minute Rosh yesterday? 13, 14 minutes, something like that. I think it was the earliest of the, the tournament. So yeah. definitely not out of the question when you have this kind of a lead. And these aura items to, to go with it. Boboka is still level 5 at 12 minutes right now for IG. And X Nova level 5 as well, it seems. Tomato will be showing himself in the top lane. Radiant are scanning. Doubling the level of X Nova right now. <laughs> Bit rough. And yeah, let's see if OG want to group up and try to take some towers. They definitely have that at their disposal. Yeah, straight on. Next objective, you know? It's uh, OG understand what game state they're in and what they can force onto G2IG. And I think they understand it just as well. So they're not going to show up to this top lane as it is. They're going to try to just push out bottom with the Dragon Knight. TA is going to farm her triangle. You're looking to still find some sort of meaningful farm on Xnova's end. The bot tower will fall, so G2IG with their first tower of the game 13 minutes in with DK Ench. It's not great. Yeah, OG, they will even pop the Unleash for this. They know this is not going to turn into a fight, so just want to be done with this as fast as possible. Go to Ari. Yep, and in a minute and a half is when Roche will be on that side, and they have firm control of the entirety the top side of the map, so that's likely what they're going to be waiting for, or <laughs> they could just do that as well, but 
just be a backstab type action. Yeah. JT has Radiant some good vision tower. here to He's help him out. A little read. Radiant the plan here and get away. And this is how it's going to be for the next 10 minutes, I think. It's going to be a game of cat and mouse. OG will try to run around the map looking for members of G2IG to kill off in groups of three or four, and Nature's Prophet obviously will be one of those heroes. Oh, Boboka. The math there. Ooh, nice sprout. Right. Falling Blade on cooldown there for Boboka. Couldn't no. quite make it in there in time. Next Nova spotted out. He is level six, but it matters not. That will claim the kill from global range. It's a model very close to the Mantha style now. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. As we have a blink as well, so well, that's actually for the, the IG side. See how aggressive they want to get with this. Is the tier two tower taking some damage in the bot lane now, but I mean, isn't it just telling that Ari does this like this? Yeah, off cooldown. Might why end not? up costing him. Doesn't look like it though. He will get away. Nice try from nothing to say there, trying to go for the deny attack onto his own trap. He will see him on the next one. Actually, oh, with the dagger, he will get it. Melt strike is enough. So Ari is punished in the end. Nothing to say, a good read. Nari just bad luck walking over. <laughs> yeah, if he would have walked left, he wouldn't have died. But it's like, it's one of those situations you just don't know, right? So you're yeah. going to take the chance. But it also kind of looked like nothing to say he didn't expect to get an opportunity. And then all of a sudden, he walked over to Travis like, Oh, I actually can still find a kill here, and he will. Oh, yeah. Very nice pickup for Boboka. Stealing the wisdom. Not too shabby. Minute 1530. Yeah. But Radiance against Nature's, Nature's Prophet is very surprising. That is true. The Nature's Prophet is weird. But typically when you have this kind of a lead, you're not going to be on that side of the map a lot of the time. So yeah. it could be a good snag. But IG will take anything they can get at this point. This 5K deficit, 16 minutes. It's not growing that much. As I say, that goes to six. Maybe it is. He's <laughs> the end now with the haste and X Nova taking heavy damage from the high ground here. And Ari is hunting. Next Nova looks to be okay, but the tower is continuing to be pressured and no defense mounted from IG. At what point will they be forced to do so? Can they wait till high ground is the question. Well, they finally get their first major item on the Morphling, which will be a decent help having the Manta. It's going to help him push out waves better. It's going to help him farm faster. This, is, this doesn't really seem like a, a fighting item whatsoever in this circumstance. It's just... He will want it as part of his inevitable endgame build regardless in this game, and now he's just going to use it for to maximize. Stall things out. Boboka looking for an opening. Might have been spotted. Yeah, seeing the pings here. Seb walking in that direction. Baboka on the high ground right now. 4k lead for OG. They do spot Baboka, but nothing stays there. Grip to start things out. BZM gets the rolling thunder, but Seb already dead. Nothing to say. He's going to get defused with Whisper now making his way over with the TP. Baboka is waiting for the Nightmare, but he's just going to TP out instead. That means nothing to say is dead. Oh, Melt Strike. <laughs> Eventually brought down. So a good attempt from IG. They definitely need to do things like that, but that is you're giving up a, a TA for a Nature's Prophet. Not exactly fair. I just think it's too deep. You're going all the way behind the Tier 2 tower on a slow kill, right? The enemy team is going to be responding in time now. Of course, from OG, it's a really good read that BZM is already in the neighborhood. Maybe that could have been a hit and run, but... It's, it's easier said than done to get fast kills and get out when you're this deep on the map. OG will be fast to respond, bring the right heroes. Go for that punish. If TI has a Deso, this is maybe a different story. Like maybe the kills are fast enough that you can can actually hit and run it. But not there yet. So OG comfortable just farming away. Yep, whisper approaching radiance. And potentially that is the item. That'll make them more comfortable to just bulldoze a bit more. Boca is spotted. Rebound, BZM, casual right click. Another kill to OG's name. Monet will TP out and is going for the new shotgun build. We don't really call it shotgun build anymore, do we? No. But it is, kind of. 
Yeah, I mean, the reason it used to be called the shotgun build was that you fired two projectiles back to back, right? Now you fire one, but it just hits twice. Kinda. Yeah, it's close enough. It's good enough, I Not guess. Not realistic. Zeb looking for somebody, but we'll just take out the illusions instead. And Tomato starting to look very stacked indeed. Just on his lonesome, a, tw a 2,000 gold lead over anyone else in the game. And for Luna, that is uh, typically you're given just a little bit of space and you expand it to a ridiculous degree. Yeah, it, do it does feel like the fastest farming carry in Dota right now. With a perfectly free game, I think it has had the overall highest GPM we've seen in this tournament. I think we saw a game from Pure ending with over 1,000 GPM on Luna this tournament one time. I believe that might even have been... Was it on stage? It couldn't have been on stage. They haven't played on stage yet. They played the upper bracket semis off stage. So we have yet to be blessed with that later on. Yeah. Well, OG will group up and uh, this will be a free Roche. Really is very clear that G2 IG are playing plan. I don't even want to call this plan B, maybe plan C. We'll find Seb at the very least, and Money will turn into him to teleport to top for maximum farm efficiency here. Yep, that's the min-max right um, When both Dragonite and Morph go Manta first item, and you're just cutting waves, this was not the this was not the plan to begin with. But it also go it it shows that IG are willing to adapt and and know that they have to pivot away from the original plan with how the lanes went. So at least they're not stuck in their ways. Like, okay, we're still going to buy Dragon Knight Dagger. We're still going to look for fights we can't win. Right. Um, so I do think this is the right approach for them. Still a very long road to equalizing this game, but this is the way to do it. It just, for a long time in Dota, playing this way has been very hard. Uh, just playing from behind and then playing constant split push until you recover is not easy. But they're keeping the game afloat. Only 4k lead now for OG. With that Tormentor going the way of X Nova, that will be a nice DPS increase for them. Yeah, but uh, once, them he, <laughs> once he gets impetus, I suppose. Um, doesn't currently have it. Does Sprite actually work? Against uh, Sprout? No, if you don't have impetus skilled. Do you fire an impetus still? Uh, I, I guess it's. I don't know. Works. I, mean, I don't know. Actually. The movement will work for sure. Yeah. That's the more important aspect in this. Just stage jump of the game. backwards and then you fire on projectile. It just says error. That would be classic Dota. <laughs> <laughs> Tomato, high ground attempt number one. Fortification is popped from IG. Of course, he has that Aegis to work with for three and a half minutes. Top lane, though. BZM showing off that blink dagger. Oh, no, on top mana. Of Monet now. Yeah, Monet very much out of mana. And the rebound from Ari. Good rotation from OG. An extremely important kill to make sure Monet cannot recover in this game number two. And it's very elegant how OG set this up, right? They're pushing bottom lane with three or four heroes at the same time, so it's less obvious for Monet to read that. That'll be a, some sort of a trade for IG. That's a quick punish. This is a big kill. This is actually IG favored overall. This is a very, very big brewmaster streak that they end there. I think he was, was he 5-0? and oh? Yeah. So mega kill gold going the way of JT. Start making some progress here. And I will say, if if OG don't manage to get a meaningful, like, Rex or map advantage by the 30 to 40 minute mark, this IG Tricor is absolutely, stupidly strong late game. I definitely think that if they can stay afloat in this fashion for another 15 minutes, I have IG favored to win this game. When Dragon Knight starts getting an Axe, then this game is going to be outstandingly strong against the OG lineup. Your morph is starting to get somewhere. The con is on the way. TA has had an okay game. So. Definitely not even remotely close to over yet for the side of G2IG. I think they've done a really good job. OG were up 7k, I want to say, three minutes ago. And they've just stabilized very well. Yeah. I mean, the question is, what can OG get out of this Aegis? They still have some time remaining. About a minute 40. We'll try to pressure again, this time in the mid lane as X Nova trying to defend. There's nothing to say, shows himself as well. As Baboka set going in kind of deep there with the Sprout, with the Lucent Beam, X Nova. Barely able to get out in time. Once this tower goes down again, Luna is a hero you have to really worry about. Ari's the one taking the brunt of the damage right now. Nothing to say with that. Deso deletes him from the map. Tier 3 tower is out.
And now Whisper can focus on that melee racks along with Tomato and those Moonglaives. Aegis still intact. They lift up the TA just to buy some time. Second fortification for IG. And now these Brulings getting quite low. So OG likely having to reset now. Whisper's going to get Dragon Tail down and burst it. Two dead now for OG as Seth looks to be the third. And G2 IG showing some signs of life. And this is a very important defense for their game. Double kill from One as Tomato. They won't be able to get too much. I mean, they get the tier three, but the Aegis will be expiring of natural causes. Yeah, so we're seeing the replay here. This is the tail end of it, obviously, just obliterating Whisper with this burst damage that they do have between the, the TA and the Morph. I think OG maybe got a little bit over aggressive looking to dive there. I get what they were trying to do with the kill on Ench, but when that failed, Ari was in a completely compromised position inside the IG base got nightmared up forever and then they just turn and kill him off and this is effectively equalizing the game. OG were close to getting racks there like maybe if you just stay in more tight formation just play around your Bruce split and it's siege the barracks. I think you might have just got the lane honestly but with this dive from the supporting cast of OG it was difficult for the cores to confidently connect on it. Yeah and keep in mind at this stage of the game normally the Brewmaster already has the Radiance which yes. made a huge difference there. Obviously he went for the Spirit Vessel first but I mean his farm has not been particularly Particularly great if you compare it to the offlaner from IG. There's a 3k separation there. Yeah, it's it's one of the big uh, big issues when you go for the vessel over the radiance is if you don't snowball the game, and you have a couple of miss, missed opportunities. This would definitely have been a better game for Whisper, but I don't I don't remember looking back on this game how impactful the vessel actually was. Like I understand why he wants it. It's amazing against all three enemy cores, so it definitely is a feels good pickup, but. It still feels like the fights that OG won, they would have won regardless in the same fashion. So it could have been a much, much faster Radiance instead. Now, I feel like we've been seeing less earn into a big item and then eventual Spirit Vessel just to be able to get the charges. Yes, that would have also it been feels it. like they just go straight forward if they're going to opt for it at all. It's Monet getting chased up. Getting that Manta off, Lucent Beam, but the grip on top of the Rolling Thunder. That doesn't really help Monet too much as he gets the double stun. It's after the fact as Monet will die, but Boca is next. The aggression from OG not punished this time. The BKB is there for nothing to say for this potential high ground defense, but there is no Aegis, of course. There's OG. Let's see if they have enough time to even opt for something like that. Tomato approaching Konda as well will definitely be a big increase in OG's long range damage. Maybe look for some sort of cute play with that plus a swashbuckle to assassinate a support in a fight, for example. Throw a little bit of a Wrath of Nature on top for the finish. Remember when Yules used to be a very common pickup on the Pango for that roll. He basically just got that for free with the Fiend's Grip on the enemy. <laughs> yeah. That was, uh, I'm not sure if it actually mattered there, but just funny to see. Yeah. Yeah, OG with a little bit of a lead, but definitely within striking distance is G2IG. So Jack, Green Barbecue Chen, the legendary figure of Dota 2, doesn't have to fret quite yet. But this is, of oh, course, an elimination game for his team. Suns fan casts G2 IG game without mentioning Jack Chen <laughs> challenge. Impossible. <laughs> you just can't do it. He's, he's just a lovable figure. You know? uh, Always on my mind. Now the next rush we won't know about uh, for another 40 seconds is I believe the Conda here for Tomato will be delivered very shortly. So that burst damage potential very high. Yep. Also important for Tomato that he has the pike. I think this is a very good game to decide to go for this early. Uh, if you look at the core-to-core -core matchups, he has Morph and TA. The panel was talking about how uh, Morph in particular is one of those heroes that can stand up to you, but guess what? You can just get the range advantage by just piking him away if he goes on you, and then suddenly you take full advantage of your low cooldown Lucent Beam Conda build. Oh, nothing to say. This is a big jump. Oh, oh my god, my. he evaporated. That was that 70 seconds of no time. Yeah, Ari and Tomato just jumped on him together in mid. He was completely alone in the middle of the map. No supporting cast Radiant nearby. That is such a huge kill. This could lead to Rax, actually. Just a full minute of control for OG. The waves, not the best, but if they could somehow get this mid wave in. JT already on the task. Oh, nice loose and beam from Tomato. X Nova is going to try to make it as hard as possible. Well, he's wasting some time here. Also Indeed. has the pike. He does, but Tomato very quick. And eventually will bring down Enchanter Seb actually getting that one. Yeah, nice kill Shakur from Seb. 
Very necessary Wrath of Nature there. Surprised they didn't tip him for it. I mean, that, that chase alone burned a lot of time on the death timer for TA. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Yeah, this is, G2 IG are going to recover from this, but that is a big, big blow to them, and OG with a great find. Still a bit surprised that nothing to say left himself vulnerable there in the mid lane and gets punished, but at the same time, you also have to take some risks. You need to push out these waves consistently so that OG can't just run the show. But now G2IG with two BKBs approaching the next fight, you know? They have Ags on Dragonite, level 18. Dyer's middle barracks. Leather Belt. Sorry, that's a reference you won't get. Yeah, I was you don't, say. You don't like funny things. Okay. It's fine. Appreciate it's that. Go one cast without insulting me. Impossible attack. for you. Yeah, <laughs> that's that, fair. Oh, he spotted right after the teleport, and that ward really paying off. <laughs> 45 seconds on the deck for him, and we'll see G2 IG is uh, Roche, available for the pickings. Uh, this is a really, really crucial moment in this game. Without the second Roche, I think it's going to be difficult for OG to look to high grounding now that the all three cores of G2 IG have effectively come online as much as they needed First, to. Smoke is popped. He's going to get Dragon Tailed into the Fiend's grip. No primal split for you. Rolling Thunder a little bit late from BZM. And OG likely having to retreat now in a three versus five situation. CM picks up the bounty and we'll be able to get away scot free, but. 40 seconds, TA plus morph. You know where this is headed. Oh, yeah. This is. Yeah, it's just theirs. I, I don't think OG can do anything about this. They might want to try, but even the Dragon Knight Manta is just causing them trouble and giving information. And this is the most important moment of the game for G2IG. They execute just what they needed to. They find a core kill that doesn't have buyback around the time that Roche is crossing the map. They're now in a very good position in this game. And I say that despite them having an open base. Yeah, there's Monet. Okay, Mana is completely burned. Remember, he just picked up the Aegis, but it's going to be a quick life number one. Inside the Sprout, and he is all alone. Can he possibly get out of this waveform? Onto the other side, close to the fountain is Tomato continuing with the Lucent Beams. Rebound not able to hit, but the Dispose back into their arms. And just like that, the age is completely irrelevant. Nice Aegis, guys. It would be a shame if you were to just <laughs> leave it out in the open alone and get punished instantly. <laughs> say OG. And yeah, all right. That was, uh, was going to be a really big advantage for G2IG, but as you say, down the drain. OG don't have it for pushing, but at the very least, in the upcoming fight, they have a fair conditions, if you will. Now I say Tanig as well. Tomato is big. He is still way ahead of the competition here. And he has to be. He has to compensate for a poor brew. So this is the hero to watch. All right, straight in. Roshan Banner, will it go down? Absolutely, along with more important objectives like the range rack. And likely the melee to follow. No morphling for 20 seconds. Does G2 IG want to defend? Do they just give up one set for now? The Enfeeble being extremely annoying for Tamana. It's not really doing much damage to the melee racks now. It's BZM having to help out. The Breathe Fire also helping out in the damage mitigation department. Dragon Tail to slow this down. Morphling up in three seconds. Spirit Festival applied to JT. And there's a fortification. So somehow G2 IG actually defend this for the time being. Oh, Whisper is right compromised now. Whisper, right now. Oh. He has the primal split, but the Dragon Tail to open up. BZM posturing a bit to make sure that they won't jump his Brewmaster. You know, like we haven't seen the primal split in a team fight for a while now because he keeps getting picked off. Dyer, seen the solo pickoffs though. Wait, why do OG have two Vlads? Do they? Ari just bought Vlads. Seth has Vlad. Oh dear. <laughs> Uh, Wraith Pact, of Yeah, course. maybe if they have one each, they can make Wraith Pact. <laughs> yes, that's the, that's the hidden patch notes. Awesome. Seems like a little bit of a <laughs> miscommunication here. I, I don't see the rationale, at least, behind having more than one. One of them um, is expecting to die early in the fight, so then they have a guaranteed backup. It's the next level play where Seb TPs in and gets killed, and IG are like, okay, we can chase, they don't have Vlad. <laughs> and then Ari's yeah, like, haha, I also have a Vlad. That is the item that they're worried about more than anything. Yeah. It's got to be. These Luna items irrelevant. Vlad's, though, I mean, it's a scary face. It has a skull on it, so understandable. Yeah. What does that have in the Chinese client? That's true. How does actually. that look for them? Maybe There's... it's not scary for them at all. Maybe it's like a cute, cuddly teddy bear aura. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's actually possible. I'll have to investigate that after this. Yeah, talk to your good friend Jack Chen, a.k.a. KBBQ. That's probably true. 
let right. you know. If he wants to talk to you after the series, it will probably be depending on the result. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, see how. Will he be enraged or will he be happy go lucky? He was in a good mood yesterday. Then he played some pubs. That happens. Big item here. Big item alert for NTS. Huge damage upgrade, and as has been the case for a while in this game, once they do find the catches, G2IG, they can assassinate even carries, or cores rather, really quickly. I think the only hero that should feel relatively safe not to get burst is Tomato, but the Pango as well as the Brew can die in a Dragon Tail if TA and Morph just pile on them with everything they have and score a critical strike with the TA in particular. I mean, out of this 7k lead for OG, five of it is Tomato. You could argue seven, right? If you're comparing to the morph. Yeah, true. So the other cores of IG well ahead of their counterparts. And then Seb is obviously the one keeping the score the way it is. Nature's yeah. Prophet will yeah, most a circumstances. Bit, a bit on the greedy yeah. side, of course. That is a Nature's Prophet style. Tormentor for OG. Who gets the shard? It'll be Ari. Right. Additional rebound functionality. And the yeah. cooldown reduction is nice. Yeah, that's the standard. I mean, I wonder if he uses this. I mean, he is definitely one of the Marcy specialists, so... I just remember watching a match with Soxa where he deleted the item so he would not gain net worth. <laughs> that's how much he hated it. It was worse back then. It was. He didn't get the cooldown reduction. Okay. But I believe this will come down to an eventual Roshoff, but there's quite a bit of time before that actually occurs. BZM with the Arcane Rune has the Basher to, to swap back in when he's ready to fight. Lead growing a little bit more for OG, though. Yeah, it's it's largely just Nature's Prophet, I would say. I think the core matchups are remaining a constant, but Seb is getting so far ahead of the enemy supports by the minute. As it is pointed out here by the Observer, he actually has more net worth now than the Brewmaster, so he is also taking something away from Wind but it is a net positive, the amount of extra farm that they are finding around the map. Yeah, they're going for a double Halberg build uh, for OG against the likes of DK, TA, and Morphling. Yep. Could become a difference maker when the BKBs expire. <laughs> it is a good call, actually. All of IG's damage is right-click reliant, with the exception of the adaptive strike Conda for Monet. Even Enchanter, even Enchanter's getting halberded can be very impactful in the right situation. So, if you're halberded and you're sprung, I guess you don't even shoot. I think you just jump. Yeah, right? probably. I did confirm earlier, by the way, that the the sprung does use your current level of impetus because he had impetus level one, and it was on cooldown from shooting. And then when he sprung, he fired a regular attack. So, mm -hmm. those two skills are completely tied together. Seb will take care of business up top, and this Nature's Prophet pick is allowing OG to stay maybe a little bit more aggressive on the map than usual. This is a, a very nice hero to have in your roster when you are facing this Manta split push TA traps. Constant poke and prod around the map from G2IG. Seb can always take care of the trash lane and still connect. That's a motto. <laughs> they blink away from him. He was all alone right there. Oh my. Very cocky play. They have uh, they have fallen into enough OG traps this series already. They, yeah, they're gonna. This is where the mental thing can really get to you, where you start seeing ghosts everywhere. Because that last game, every move G2IG tried to make was countered. So now when they see a Luna, they'll just be like, "There's no way, right? Radiant's yeah, that he's alone." And sometimes attack. it will be the case, but I don't know if it would have been good for them to even try anything there. To be honest. So. Ari on the way to a BKB. Can almost have it if he sells his Vlads. <laughs> It'll be two-thirds of the way then. Yeah, that's true. Very <laughs> important to get rid of that as soon as possible. The stats on it do not matter, apparently. It's Tomato. On to the high ground they go, and people right. to start things out, but yeah, they'll just back away. Yeah, they're trying to bait G2IG to TP back. This is essentially just a, a macro play. This was not with the intent of taking barracks. They're just hoping that they can psych G2IG out a little bit and force their heroes back to base. Did not work though. They called the bluff and they stayed out on the map. The Bane solo defended and they're very impressive from G2IG. And Seb showing himself in the bot lane now. I think Seb is probably going to go for an AC here, just knowing him and looking at the style of game that this is. It is an incredible aura for the team to have. 
Uh, he could almost have it if he sells his Vlad. Um, yeah, that, really that, 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 yeah. <laughs> that is another path to unlocking it, but I, I do think that's the best item he can buy here. A lot of the times you'll see Nature's Profits buy a utility item in the slot, like... Uh, Next Nova. Uh, but run into by BZM. He's going to use the Rolling Thunder for the Enchantress. Gets the bash on the Shield Crash with the Aghanim Scepter. But here comes the Dragonite. And we get the Fiend's Grip directly onto BZM. And he's dead just like that. Even the Primal Split used. But now, just trying to run away is OG. Yeah, that's a get the fuck out dad moment if I've ever seen one. OG running away. As quickly as they came. And this is... I, I'm curious to see which, which direction Boboka takes this. He's actually eyeing up the BKB over the Ags. I think he recognizes, okay, if I'm BKB, my grip's going through, right? There's, they're not going to be able to stop it with any BKB piercing ability, uh, with the exception of a Pango Bash. So if he's the guy he's gripping, you know, it's likely staying there. Yep. Uh, but Seb is not going to AC, by the way. He is planning on a Shiva, which I find a bit surprising when you look at the... This is a big pickup, though. Third yeah. Roche. Yep. So you get Aghanim Scepter now. Who picks it up? Looks like nothing to say. We'll be teleporting everywhere. The good thing about getting Ags from this Roche is that that one doesn't drop in 30 seconds when you get ganked onto the map <laughs> as the carry. That is permanent net worth. Yep. They're going to keep that one. And wait, who did you say they put it on? They put it on TA. the TA? Yeah. I mean, they could have put that on the Bane as well. It would have been... Quite nice, then maybe. But that's a support, Cinder, and sure. Yeah, fair. Never mind. I take it back. You know these core players, what they're like. <laughs> Insufferable. I mean, if you if you look at the way the game is being played, uh, obviously the the TA Ags for this game state is really nice. So I don't blame them. I just I'm saying it was a an interesting alternative that would have allowed Boboka to probably not go BKB and spend his gold in an entirely different fashion. They do think the TA. Psionic projection yeah. is more valuable. Well, it makes this gem for Ari way more important now. Being able to kill these True. traps yeah. just provides so much extra map control for OG, but it's going to be hard to find them all. Damn, Seb has cycled through all the armor items. So he was eyeing up Shiva's, then he sold his Vlad's and got Lotus. Oh, so he did sell them. <laughs> big up to him for selling the Vlad. Oh man, I wish we had a replay of that. And now he's going for the AC. So I am happy to ultimately see him arrive at that, but... I guess the Lotus, it did, it's a bit difficult to say which one is more important, right? If he puts Lotus on Pango, he can protect him against the Bane, which is really big. But um, AC has a lot of teamfight impact, and ultimately he will want both, which is very understandable. Yeah, it won't protect him after the grip comes out, though. It has to be prematurely used. G2G is filling out on the map. BZM already used his blink uh -oh. into the Dragon Knight's arms. Oh even boy. the grip extended from Baboka just to ensure the death of BZM and even uh, an MKB for X Nova. He is going to start really hurting now on this inch. BZM was having such a clean game. He was 4 on 8 and now he's been caught twice back to back within three minutes. His kills are really big. It's just buying G2IG so much time. And I do think at this point you have to look at this game as one that is quite clearly G2IG favored the way I see it. Like the they managed to somehow, after having a really terrible start to the game with very weak team fight, they've managed to stall out the game, get to the point where all three of their cores are true carries. Like, this is a tri-carry lineup yeah. that they're running. And all of them are buying carry items. So the Brewmaster's Radiant effectiveness is going to... He's going to fade into irrelevance I'm a little bit worried about here for, for the side of OG soon. Because uh, Whisper cannot keep up with this level of farm. As a matter of fact, G2IG are going to take matters into their own hands. They push really fast, so OG better get back on time. Dragonite plus Morphling can make work of a tower in five seconds together. They will force out the Glyph and reset and go back to mid and claim that one instead. Look at that pushing speed. That's yeah. without the TA and the Deso. <laughs> Imagine with, they could clean up the base in half a minute. Yeah, if I OG think. were to lose a fight without buybacks, the game would just end. OG really needed to have gotten that, uh, that set of barracks back when they originally pushed, because now no real lane advantage. It's just the range rack, which does basically nothing. And ideally, one of the second and third Roches, right? That's where I feel like G2IG really stalled out the game. Despite losing the Aegis, at the very least, they took it away from OG's Luna and allowed themselves to play in a fashion that is 
I don't know if I'm uh, old, but... Are, are you a little surprised that there's no Lincolns for BZM? I got to hold that thought, though. You might have a bit of action with the Aegis still intact for Monet on the more flank. JT on the cliff. Not to say, able to blink out. Now JT slowed. showing himself. The Wrath of Nature doing a nice job of keeping them in place. The Rolling Thunder coming in from BZM. Focusing on Baboka, but he gets bursted, actually, after the usage of the BZM. Oh they even God. delete nothing to say with the Eclipse. Now, Tomato and company, major advantage in this fight. They find three pickoffs, and now Monet back. gets back mid TP inside the Sprout. That's the Aegis. And OG kind of surround Morphling again. We've seen this before. And somehow OG power up when the enemy gets Aegis. <laughs> Just really good play calling to isolate and kill. This Aegis profitable is fantastic. But getting this Bane instantly is the play here. Look, Temato, no hesitation, just blinks and pops everything. Oof. And the amount of damage instances they have between Ari and Temato, the, even the 25 Refraction Talent, it looked like nothing to say he didn't even have Refraction. And he just died in the blink of an eye, so... OG, when they do get the entry into the fight and they find the right targets, they can definitely build something out of it. Yep, that's mid lane for OG. There's a buyback for the Morphin with the Dispose onto the Dragon. That's going to force the buyback now. That's the Bash onto JT, already using the BKB. We can see OG. Oh, he didn't get, over oh, he didn't get to the low ground. Nothing to say. Gets the Silent. Melt Strike, finally. A couple force staff views and the Swashbuckle BZM. Looks like he might survive as a result. Instead of getting slowed by the Dragonite Illusions. Mono and company going to be grouping up. Power of Friendship and whatnot. Very, Looks like they very will be able to get out. For OG to get out there. They got the Morph and the TA buybacks and the Lena Barracks and lost nobody. Saving Private BZM on the way out. <laughs> That's straight back in. Yeah, Primal Split, be able to take out the Tier 3 easily. JT still in that Dragon form, but not for that much longer. As the buildings are absolutely melting right now. And that's going to be two lanes for OG. So fast. This was looking to be IG favored. They have the Aegis. They have the Cheese, which still hasn't been used. They lose that team fight horribly, and now they're down two sets of it's racks. It's all about how Radiant fights start. OG being able to find that flank and getting a great Nature's Prophet route into just piling on them. And now the items starting to flow in favor of OG. Talked about the AC for Seb. Yep. And Octarine we saw from Whisper, so more Primal Splits to use. And Ari starting to become a real threat now as well in this uh, Marcy. We saw how he just made quick work of the TA together with the Luna. Now with BKB, it's going to be even easier. And he still has the Vlads. He w did not delete his. Yeah, I think it's good they kept one of them. Yeah, I think so too. Imagine they miscommunicate and sold it at the same time too. <laughs> yeah, that uh, would have been really fun. <laughs> but there is a limit to how wrong it can go for OG. And right now it seems like they can do no wrong anymore. Yes. Two lanes of barracks and in a good control of the map. Definitely now looking to try to finish this one off with the refresh on Brewmaster and Ultimate ready. They can just go for two back to back pokes, and that is exactly what's yeah. going to happen here. So the rolling thunder. Off. And we see the primal split can be used to take out the tower easily. The backline defense on Kovalki pops the BKB. He's already relatively safe, looking for an opening on the Fiend's Grip. Not able to find one initially as BZM gets to the low ground, but these buildings again are melting. The Glaze from the Illusions doing so much damage. Looks like Seb is the first to fall though, but there's the oh. grip onto Tamara. Beautiful rebound to three as Ari destroying them on the back line, but now he is the one destroyed as no more Luna to play with. Three for one, successful defense from IG, or is it? They lose the melee racks. So only one range to go to get these Mega Creeps for OG. Yeah, it looked like Seb just flat out threw his body at the barracks and died for it. And that gave G2IG a bit of an angle as Ari committed in again. They get some return kills. And they do hold on to one range barracks. But you're down two and a half lanes against Nature's Prophet. It is always going to be dangerous. You have to constantly be on top of your waves now. Any little moment of opportunity, Seb's going to TP in there, spawn some Treants, and get to work with his AC. If you don't have Glyph... Yeah. That barracks can fall in a matter of seconds, even against a support profit when he's this farmed. And remember, the range does not regen at all, so yep. it feels inevitable that that will be killed. Regeneration. And then you will be seeing the classic against the ropes mega creeps game that IG will definitely not GG out of until they have oh, to. They have plenty of experience with that. Yep. So. 
as they split the uprights with the Dragon Knight. See what they can get in return. I think OG really don't want to spend core buyback here on the Luna. That is the big one. And they might... Yeah, but as you see the Primal Split being used to get the Mega Creep, so giving up a lane of racks, even potentially two, not that big of a deal. As they will certainly wait for the buybacks as Monet gets the melee racks. That is Mega Creep for OG now, as Whisper, he's gonna get hounded. Might cost him his life as X-Nova on the split screen, spotted by BZM. Looks like they'll find the stun, and eventually the Enchantress will fall. And Whisper able to survive through that. How did uh, how did OG break backdoor? I didn't actually see. They, which wave did Whisper manage to get into the base there? That's a quite big blunder from the side of G2IG. If you have the three enemy heroes dead and you're pushing their base, somebody has to take care that this doesn't happen. I wasn't even looking for it. Maybe it was the same for G2IG. They're like, oh, they can't do this. Somehow, Whisper finds the angle and gets the Megas, and now... Now the real game begins. You can't ask for better conditions for OG now, except an Ages and Cheese, which they can think about claiming soon. Yep, Roche, the Ages, yes, the Cheese, spawn. the potential Aghanim Scepter, and of course the Tier 5 items in 11 minutes that we're definitely going to get to because this yep. is a Mega Creep game. Yeah, love that. Very exciting. I mean, it's... It's really the Mega Creeps that are the big threat here for G2 IG because 11k lead for OG, it's not that substantial at the, in the 15 minute, 15 minute game. Yeah, this is not about the gold at all. I agree. I, I think it still in any given fight, G2 IG can definitely win it, but the constant pressure and information advantage that OG is going to have will be worth way more than gold. So it's just a matter of them playing the map correctly and not getting caught off in a weak position. Big item here coming out from Monet could help them in the upcoming fight. He's probably going to have to just flat out initiate for his TA. I think a problem that G2IG have had in many of their fights is nothing to say, just getting isolated and killed off really quickly by the, Warriors of the wood. Luna as well as Marcy. So if other cores can work as a lightning rod for him would be very, very helpful. And Morph with a butter can do just that. Of course, no true strike on... No true strike on any OG hero, I believe, so very valuable in this game. Some OG in the fans in the crowd with the world's smallest little flag. But <laughs> still says OG on it. You couldn't see it in the camera shot, but you <laughs> zoomed in enough. I promise you I've seen them up close. Yeah, still more polygons than more fling. Under a microscope, and it is indeed an OG flag. Down goes Mr. Stone Man. It was inevitable. And they will choose to put the Aegis here on Timato for the push. And of course, lest we forget, have a Roshan's banner here with the Mega Creeps. You love that. <laughs> lest we forget, yes. Uh, yeah, this, uh, let's see if OG used this to make the Creeps stronger or to get one second of vision at the two more towers <laughs> in the enemy base. But choices okay, are plenty uh, here. All right, I will say, we haven't brought it up too much because I'm sick and tired of talking about such an irrelevant item. But when they have Mega Creeps, they do become Gaben Creeps, which are mm. ridiculously powerful. Well, they're less powerful than they used to be. As we know, Gaben has lost quite a bit of weight and he has <laughs> really been on a this bot lane though look, very at, that. Inspiring look at the swagger journey. of these gaben creeps look at the damage mm. just so much heft and juice yeah, inside them scary. beautifully done we'll see if they can counteract this with three right clicks to the roshan banner eventually or one shotting the wave with ta yeah, or that and look at enchantress can't deal with it they're, they're quite strong Yep. All right, we have a pause just to really bask in the glory that is the Gaben Creeps. Let's get a cheer for Gaben Creeps, Birmingham. All right, let's, let's put this on a scale. Let's get a cheer for uh, alcohol. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, I think we, uh, we know, uh. know where that stands. Very, very Birmingham of you guys. That was a quick disconnect, but... Uh, All right, there was a guy in the crowd trying to get a cheer for us, and he got almost nothing. So I think alcohol has <laughs> taken a very clear first place here. I, I think I Ari, Ari is too young to have alcohol, though, I oh. think. He hasn't let it ruin his life yet, and that's why he is having a successful career as a young lad. <laughs> the turn's really dark. <laughs> very fast. Sorry about that. And we're back in the game. You guys enjoy your beers, lads. I'm sure it's fine. I remember, the Roshan's banner is bought. Very important to keep that in mind. BZM and company. Okay, we're going to get Whispers all. we go again. Apply as much pressure to these Tier 4s as possible. 
That's a lot of damage from the Conda, though, from Monet. I said, my god, all right, well, uh, they tickled the buildings, but they don't regen. That's the important thing. Do this 100 times, and they will yeah, be able to prevail. Whisper. Oh! Will okay. be able to get out. He can get out of the Primal Split anytime he wants now with that shard anyway. No big deal. Has the Refresher, of course. And they do have the Refresher shard right now. It's on Tomato. And we'll see. And he actually went for the Eclipse Lucent Beam Mini Stun talent. So a double Eclipse will actually destroy, potentially, especially with the Gabe and Creeps. Yeah, Don't how forget. long is it the interval is between each individual beam? You definitely know this. You mean 0.25 second stun? Times now, two? I'm saying how, how much of the time are you stunned if you're solo tanking an Eclipse with this talent? Like, how long does it take in between each beam? Oh, I mean, you're perma-stun. Are you sure about this? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Okay. Now, that is crazy. I could have just made that up. I, mean, I think you did. Like, why would you believe anything that I say? Uh -huh. 53 minutes in the game, Cinderin. Will we get to the dream scenario that only I enjoy, apparently? Everybody's complaining about these 60-minute games. It's what I live for. Motto. Level 26. What can he upgrade here? <laughs> um, he has... I mean, an eventual refresher orb. He is going for Scotty right now to replace, I mean, I guess the Hurricane Pike. Yeah, Scotty feels real good against Morph, of course. Uh, he needs the Moon Shard still. Still a Moon little bit of ways to grow, but... Oh, yeah. They are constricting the map right now. And OG... I mean, how much time is on this Aegis here? Two minutes to go, so I assume... Wait, what's the timer on Roshan's battery? Is it already dead? <laughs> Oh, why? Uh, it's, still, it's still there no, for another two minutes, 30 seconds. Is it? So okay. They have full overlap. All right, that's good. I am actually really proud of myself. I feel like this is the first time <laughs> I've tried to find the Roshan banner and been successful. Can we get a petition to have Gaben's face show up on the mini-map? So yeah. that at least the casters and the, the audience can see it. I definitely think the banner should have a different mini-map icon than anything else, right? Like, it'd just be a little flag. Like, it's just a... Sure, like the OG flag, but not too it, small, of It's course. just a... Yeah, okay. Let's... It needs to be visible. Two it, pixels. Just a, just a little little flag icon, at least for the observers. If you don't want to have it for the teams, that's fine, but... Nothing to say is back. The FPS issue has been resolved. That is a lot of... OG... What do you call these? The ones they are holding signs? Yeah. Do you have another that word? Is, that is the word, sign. Very good. Is there another word for those specific Extremely types eloquent, signs? as always, as Thank the primal split number two comes out. Okay, they're going to push the dragon to the other side. He does not have his dragon form anymore. This might be the go time for OG. It's JT, a pathetic human being. You can see the wrath of nature. Doing quite a bit to keep them in place. And I think the tickling of the tower is not too shabby. He's not Tomato coming in. That's going to be one tier four tower down. They get the Eclipse off the Dragon Knight taking massive damage. But four staff to safety. Might be able to get the Fountain on time. Primal split again from Whisper. And now the Ancient is fully exposed. The Bash onto Monet. But they find BZ in a step. He has the buyback. And the fortification about to drop. It's JT dies inside the Ancient, but now the Ancient being exposed, being damaged by the likes of OG. Nothing to say, has to try to back away, but a Swashbuckler brings him down, and OG take it out, and they take this series 2-0.